In this iWay 8 tutorial, we're going to be generating a simple HTTP application. This application is going to deliver a web page available in a predefined port, allow a user to enter information into that web page, and then post that information back to Service Manager, at which time Service Manager will receive the data and simply put it into the file system in a file. Eventually, we'll build on this application, allowing you to take the response and move it to a database or to another data flow. In order to start our application, you first need to open up the iWay integrator and create a new project. I've named mine Simple Web App. In order to create a project, simply right-click the empty space on the Application Explorer, New, Application Project, and then give it whatever name you see fit. This project is default, with one exception. If I go to Resources, I've added this index.html page. If we want to edit that to see what the HTML itself looks like, we can open this up in the text editor. And here you can see a very simple HTML document. In order to add it to the resources, simply type this out in Notepad or some other text editor and either save it to your workspace in this location or to somewhere else and just simply cut and paste it directly to your workspace. In order to generate the application, we first want to start out with the logic that's going to happen when we post the results to Service Manager. For that, we're going to come here to Flows. Click on Flows, right-click, and we're going to add a new flow. We're going to call this Simple Web App and click Finish. By default, we have our start and end point. For this phase of the application, we simply want to take the results of the post and drop it to the file system. So we're going to come over here and type File, and there underneath Connectors is our file connector. If I mouse over, that describes it. I'm just going to drag that right onto my canvas and drop it right onto the wire. Now I'm going to expand the Properties window to be able to see it better, and here's where we configure what the file object is going to do. In the drop-down list, I have a number of options, and I'm just going to write to a file system. Now there's a number of different settings that need to be set. In this case, I only care about two of them. The directory where I'm going to drop the file, and the file name itself. The directory can be anywhere that the service has permission to write. In this case, I'm going to write it to my workspace under Simple Web App Resources. This way it's going to show up right in this directory, and I can test it and see the results right from my application. For the file name, this convention can be anything you want. However, I'm going to put pound sign period XML. What this is going to do is name it with each number iterating. So the first time I hit post, it will be a 1, then the next file that will be sent will be a 2, and so on. That's all that's necessary for the file writer. There are other settings available, but we don't have to worry about them for this use case. At this point, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to save and then create my channel. The channel is what's going to bind this logic that we just generated to drop something to the file system to the protocol that is the HTTP listener that's going to receive the request. To do that, you click on Channels, right-click, New, and click Channel. We can name it whatever we want, but again, I'm going to name it Simple Web App. Hit Next, and at this point, we want to create the actual location where the listener is going to be. Listener is the definition of what the incoming protocol is. So I'm going to come up here and click Add, and I have a list of all the different listeners that are installed. If I scroll down, there are two HTTP listeners. We can see version 1.0 and version 1.1. Version 1.0 is deprecated, so we're not going to use that. It's still in the system in order to support legacy applications. For this point, we're going to use HTTP 1.1 and hit Finish. And then we're going to hit Finish one more time. At this point, we've created the channel, but we're not done configuring it. There are three steps that need to be followed. The first thing we want to do is finish configuring the HTTP listener. We've added it, but haven't actually told the system anything about it, such as what port do we want it listed on. If I click the IP properties, here I have port, and I'm going to change that to 9998. Next, we're going to look at the HTTP session. 
There's no information here that needs to be modified. Next, we're going to click on General Properties and let's make the Properties page a little bigger. A few things we need to set. First, Document Root. The Document Root is where the service is going to look for the HTML document when we go to the URL. I've dropped that index.html file into this location. It's important to make sure that for whatever location you choose, that the service actually has read access to that directory. Next, underneath of Get Handling, we're going to be using this as an HTTP server, so I need to change from the drop-down list, the Get Handling setting, from Error to Doc Root, allowing us to browse. Now we're finished with the HTTP listener. The next thing we need to do is bind this listener to the logic that we've started to build. For that, I'm going to click on Processes. Come over here, click to add, and then navigate to my process flows and choose my simple web app from the flows and hit OK. Finally, iWay8 typically internally likes to deal with either XML or JSON. What we're going to do is we're going to change the input string from the HTTP post from the string to XML. The way we're going to do that is we're going to go into our inlet configuration and I want to add an additional component to that inlet. Here you can see I have a choice between listeners, decryptors, and pre-parsers. Listeners are the protocols, so HTTP, FTP, file system, etc. Decryptors are usually custom pieces of logic to decrypt an incoming data source before passing it to the business workflow. Pre-parsers are a piece of logic that actually translate the data before it gets handed off to our process flow. I'm going to add one pre-parser and hit OK. Next, we have the place but haven't actually associated to a type yet. So I'm going to click Change Type. And if I scroll down here to this list, I see that I have an HTTP pre-parser. I'm going to click on Finish with that. Next, I'm going to save this. My final step is to deploy the application. To do that, come over to Bundle, right-click, go down to Run As, and choose Application Deployment. In order to deploy the application, we want to make a few quick changes. The first thing is we want to pick a template. We don't have a template customly made for us, so we're just going to use a default one. So click on the second radio button and click Refresh, and from the drop-down list you should see RAW, so select that. Now we have to give it an application name, Simple Web App. Finally, we don't want to have to go anywhere to start the service, so let's click Auto Start. Click Apply, and then click Run. Now if we open up the console, we can see here that it's attempting to start the application, and it has already successfully deployed it. And the simple application is up and running. Our next step is to test it. To do that, we open up a web browser, go to localhost, port 9998, slash index, dot html, and we have in this case a place where I can add first name and last name. So John Smith, and I'm going to submit that. Within my workflow, I didn't define what type of response I'm going to be sending back to the HTTP server. So what's happening is that I'm getting a system message. This is actually what comes out of the file write step. It's telling me that it's successfully written this to a particular directory. Now if I go back to my designer and click on resources here, you can see one.xml and I click on that. Here we have John Smith. Of course, this is only the first step. Once we have received the data from the post, we can take that information, we can transform it to any data format that's required, and then we can utilize any of the pre-built steps that come with iWay8. Thank you very much. For more information on the HTTP listener and anything else iWay8 related, go to our tech support page, Underneath iWay Integration, click on Service Manager, Documentation, and we have a full document guide for HTTP solutions, as well as many other protocols.